Hallelujah. You may return to your seat quickly. I'm not going to preach long. I'm not looking at my watch. Hallelujah. But I have a message that God gave me last night. We did not talk. And in my message, I'll talk about what God did. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, I'm asking you to turn with me to Mark chapter 9, and I'll be reading verses 17 and 18 and 22 and 23. Brother Carney, uh, Bishop, please, if it's all right, I'm going to forego the protocol of mentioning everybody's name. Bishop, please forgive me, but I feel like we need to go right into the Word of the Lord. Would you stand to honor the Word of God? Hallelujah. Mark chapter 9. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. Verse 22, And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything. But if thou canst do anything. Have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Hallelujah. I want to preach for a few moments from the verse that I stopped on, If thou canst do anything. In the New International Version, it says, But if you can do anything. In the New King James Version, but if you can do anything. But I like especially the New Living Testament, that's a translation that says, do something if you can. Do something if you can. And in Spanish it says, pero si puedes hacer algo. Hallelujah. I've come to tell you this afternoon, God can do it. I said, I've come to tell you this afternoon, God can do it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Gleason, thank you for talking to us about having babies in the midst of the battle. Hallelujah. I feel that God is giving birth to something today in impact. Sister Mangan, I want to thank you because there's some bowls of prayer that are filled on the golden altar. And I want you to know we are going to reach Mississippi for the name of Jesus. We are going to reach North America for the name of Jesus. We are going to reach the world for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah, the New Living Translation. Do something if you can. God, in your name right now, I pray that you'll help me to preach the message that you gave to me last night. In the name of Jesus, reach out and touch us. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. Would you take somebody's hand before you're seated and say, can he do it for you? And then you may be seated. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Do something if you can. Sacrilegious. Lack of respect to ask such a question. But I'm afraid that many of us are guilty of this. And it can be translated that if he wants to do it, or if he was able to do it, well, God is able and he wants to do it. Can somebody give a hand clap to the Lord right now? We love you, Jesus. The scripture that we have read this afternoon, the Bible says, first of all, Master, I have brought to thee my son. In other words, I have a problem. In other words, I have a need. I can't fix it. It hurts me to say this, but I'm desperate, said the dad. I've come to preach to you this afternoon. It's not a sin to have a need. It's not a sin to know that you need the touch of the hand of God. Sister Mang and I come here today to tell you, I need Jesus today more than I ever have needed him. Bishop, I've come to say today, the foreign missions of vision of the United Pentecostal Church. We need the touch of the hand of God. I can't make it without the hand of God. If you have need of him, would you raise your hand and talk to him right now? We love you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. It's not a sin, Brother Reed, to have a need in our life. It's not a sin.
sin, the Bible says that Peter had a problem. He was full of prejudice and he did not think that the Gentiles could be saved. The reason most likely because of that prejudice was because of peer pressure. And the bottom line is he has a need. Hallelujah, Brother Andrus. I talked to you. I thought, saw you back there. There you are. I talked to Brother Andrus last night and I was bemoaning. Brother Haney, forgive me, but I took two days off and I said I wasn't going to look at my email. My wife and I celebrated our 36th wedding anniversary on Tuesday and it's been a great 36 years. Hallelujah. Sweetheart, I love you. I love you. It's been a great 36 years. I promised her I wouldn't look at my email. But thanks to my famous iPhone, I was able to sneak a few of them. But yesterday morning, I got up at 6 o'clock and began to answer the emails. And Brother Huntley began to deal with all kinds of things that I'm not going to bore you with. But when I drove over here, my wife was driving. I had to make phone calls, Brother Haney, to take care of things that people have heard and trying to straighten things out. I got here and I didn't feel good. And I thought, Lord, what am I going to preach? Brother Gleason, I knew you were preaching. I knew the bishop had preached. And I saw all these other great preachers here. I don't deserve to be here. Did you hear what I said? I don't deserve to be here because I can't do anything. But you know what? I've got a God that can I said, I've got a God that can. And if you think I'm going to sit around and act like a bump on a log, you've got another thing coming. I've, uh, coming. I've come to tell you, my God is able. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you don't come to meetings like this not knowing what you're gonna preach. I'm sorry, you need to know. And I didn't know what I was gonna preach yesterday. And I thought, God, help me on the computer. And I began to go look through them. And I began to say, what can I pull out? And there was nothing, brother, more that I could feel. But then I began to pray. And then God touched last night. I had a thought, looked at the notes. But God worked me over. I jet lagged. I just got back in from South. South Africa. Sometimes I don't know where I am because of all the jet lag and everything. But I want you to know, Brother Chance, I began to think about what God wanted. I went and tried to go to bed last night. Finally at 1245, I was thinking about this message and God woke me up and said, so you don't think I can do it? You don't think I can handle those situations? You don't think I can take care of such and such a country and this problem over there in Asia and this problem in the Pacific? and God worked me over. I said, God worked me over. I've never preached this before and you don't do that in these meetings either. Hallelujah. But you know what? I haven't come here to impress you today. I've come to tell you that God is able. I've come to tell you, Brother Dylan, that God is able. Hallelujah. I don't serve a second God in a trinity. I serve the only God, and his name is Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I went to bed at 1245. I went to sleep. I woke up at 345, took my computer, went down to where that micro hotel. That's a great place. Hallelujah. And I began, the guy that was working there, I said, I don't know who you are, but I'm feeling the Holy Ghost. I said, I don't know. He says he goes to some sanctified church. I said, thank God, because I feel the Holy Ghost. I began to type on the computer, and you know what God did, Brother Dylan? He kept me awake all night long, reminding me of case after case after case of miraculous intervention by God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I've come to tell you today, Brother Tipton, the Holy Ghost is on Mississippi. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I've come with a message today to tell you, God is able. I said, God is able, and there's victory in the name of Jesus. I said, there's victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You can sit there, as Brother Kraft says, like a mule looking at a gate if you want to. But I've come to tell you, I've come to rejoice in the Lord because there is victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 
Hallelujah. I couldn't stay in the lobby. You may be seated. I couldn't stay in the lobby. So I had my tennis shoes on and my ball cap and my Salvadorian t-shirt. Hallelujah. And I began to walk on 98. And I began to walk and I began to think about God, what God was doing. I walked down to the left of the micro hotel speaking in tongues. And I was hoping somebody was listening to me. Because you know what? It was about five o'clock in the morning. But I've come to tell you, God is able. I said, God is able. I said, God is able. I said, God is able. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Begin to walk down 98. Walk past Hudson, sweetheart. We live in St. Louis, Nordstrom's, Saks Fifth Avenue. And so when we drove to church yesterday, she said, there it is, Hudson's, hallelujah. And that's where she'll go shopping, praise God. Because you know what? I'm not a highfalutin executive. I'm a sinner saved by the grace of God. I'm somebody that just knows that I've got to have God like I've never had him before. And our bishop knows that too. I said our bishop knows that too. We are going to reach the world with the name of Jesus. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I said can somebody shout hallelujah? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mother, it's good to have you here. My mother-in-law's here, the greatest mother-in-law in the world. Hallelujah. Aunt Nancy, I love you. Went past the old home place yesterday out in Pineburg in Hub. Hallelujah. And began to think, Mother, about what God has done in our lives. How, where we have come from and you have come from, living out there in the woods. Hallelujah. But you know what? God is able to do it. I said God is able to do it. I said, God is able to give us revival in Amory, Mississippi. I said, God is able to give us revival in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But it won't happen at a program out of the FMAC committee room. It won't happen out of the general board committee room. You know, it will, it will happen, Sister Mangan. It'll happen when we get on our knees before God and we begin to call out upon God and we say, God, I need you more than I need anything else. Hallelujah. You've come here today. You may be seated wondering about the sickness in your family. You've come here wondering about your children that are not serving God the way they should. Your church is having problems. Your calling seemingly has been obstructed by the protocol of organization in order that we do need. Everybody say amen. The revival has not come. You don't have anyone to pull strings for you, brother and sister Summers. And I know we've got missionaries here from Cyprus. I know they're not appointed yet. Is your application in? Have you sinned or in? I probably looked at it. It's in the process. Hallelujah. But I want to tell you today they had to come home because they didn't have $10,000 that Cyprus was telling them they needed. Hallelujah. They had to come back home. But you know what? Here they are today. And you know what? God is able. I said, Brother Summers, God is able. You've seen a revival in Cyprus. You told me recently, 41 people, and they just started the work there in Cyprus, folks. I want you to know, God is able. God is able. Hallelujah. I said, God is able. I feel a witness of the Holy Ghost right now. Is there somebody here that you're facing a situation and you don't know what to do with it? Is there somebody here? Brother David Bernard was telling me last night. He's not, I don't think he's here. He's probably gone on back home. But Brother Bernard was telling me about how he doesn't know how they're going to be able to do what they need to do because the sale fell through on their building. But you know what? Would somebody call him right now? Does anybody have his phone number? Call him right now and tell him, I said, God is able. God is able. I said, God is able. I said, God is able. I've been to your church, Brother Gleason. I was privileged to do a world missions conference there. I wish you could see that church. You know what? God is able. Let's raise our hands and praise him right now for a moment. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
God, I love you, Jesus. 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 My, 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 do I feel the Holy Ghost here? I said, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Come on. Somebody listen to me. God is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. There was a lady that had a need. Her family. Anyone here feel like you need, have a need in your family? Is there anybody that has a need in your family? Maybe children or parents. I've come to tell you God is able. There was a lady like you in the scripture in Matthew 15, verses 28, 22 through 28. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is 